There we go. Hi, everyone. Hi. The latest episode of uh, Drum Education Live, and today we have the amazing Colin Woolway with us. How are you doing, Colin? Woo! Me? <laughs> I'm very well. Very well, for all point. So I've known, how long have we known each other? Probably 20 years, I would think, on and off. Oh, possibly more, actually. It's quite a long time. Are um, you that old? I had some lessons with Colin when I came out of Musicians Institute. Um, and I've kind of been popping back and forth with him on and off for, for quite a long time. Um, and I thought it'd be really good to get him on because Colin's got some really, really interesting and useful um, concepts about stickings applied to the drum set. Um, but I think we usually start with some questions, Colin, and then we can kind of maybe go into your demonstration or whatever, yeah, just, whatever you wanted to talk about. So, Kira, did I'm you have any questions? Um, so, I've got right. loads of questions, actually. Oh, you wrote it down, blimey, okay. Wow, <laughs> things are getting serious, man. <laughs> I, better, I better prepare myself now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, well, I was just going to comment about the videos that you do put out on your social media. Um, they're brilliant. Like you give these little compact little um, lessons or little tips. And it seems to me like you always have so much to put out there. And I just wondered what keeps you inspired and keeps you searching for these um, concepts. Oh gosh, um, uh, I, oh blimey, I don't know. Um, I think, uh, I, actually I don't know. Uh, I, I, there's so much now, isn't there? I mean, you, every time you log on to Facebook, there's 30 people with ideas and this is today's thing, and da 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 da, da. Um, And I watch some of them, but I haven't got time to watch them all, and I don't, I don't suppose anyone has. <clears throat> and I often think, um, okay, is this person just showing off? Is this person actually trying to communicate an idea that we can all benefit from? Is this person just simply thinking, oh, this is a good idea. I think I'll film it and put it out there. Or is this a genuine education exercise? <clears throat> and the fact that there's so much um, potential for taking the things that we already know and reworking them I think it's a combination of seeing other people and, and, and sort of being subconsciously inspired by them. What are they trying to do? What are they trying to say? Mm. Have I got anything to say that would add to that? Um, and this idea of reworking stuff that we you know, it's okay to get a light bulb moment and think, oh, well, that's quite, that's quite interesting. Um, and uh, I think that's the inspiration. I think the inspiration is, is other people, really. Um, are you hearing me okay? I've just got a thing saying my internet connection is unstable. Well, your video is a little bit glitchy, but the sound is fine. Okay, now I'm, I'm hooked up to a reliable network. <coughs> um, uh, so I think, I think really the answer to that question, I think that you just, I just get light bulb moments. And I think, I wonder if anyone else has done that. Mm. And then I think, I wonder if anyone else would like to see me do that. <laughs> <laughs> And, and the, the, the thing recently, of course, was the fact that we're, we've all got much less to do. We've got no traveling to do. We're all stuck inside. And somebody on Facebook just actually threw in, you know, what about a daily warm up? Um, and I just thought it was a really good idea. So I was inspired by that, you know, yeah, a daily warm up. Why not? So I've done 15 now. So there's two weeks worth of just little two minute things to just get your wrists going or whatever. Um, and uh, I'd be really pleased to tell all my students, you know, go and, go and sign up to my YouTube channel, not to make my numbers look good or to give my ego a bit of a boost, but actually because there's some stuff on there I've put there for you that, you that you might like to have a look at. In fact, I'm sure you'd like to have a look at. So go and sign up. So I think that's the inspiration. It's probably just other people and, and just those light bulb moments, you know. Cool. Felipe? Yes. Um... I, it's a two-part question. First, if you could explain what drum sense is and what was your idea behind it. And are those the two questions? Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> uh, actually they, they, they blend into one. 
Um, yeah, right. Which, which is that uh, I'll try and keep this to the, 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 the short version of the story, otherwise we'd all have to go down the pub and have several beers. <laughs> <laughs> when I decided to quit touring, so the Susie Quattro band was the thing that had kept me very, very busy in the last eight years of my touring career. And when I decided that enough was enough, I had already thought that I would go into teaching. So I didn't leave the band and think, what should I do next? I, I'd already decided what I was going to do next. And I, I gave myself a six month get out. And then I gave Susie two months notice. Um, uh, and my idea was if I, I, was, I mean, I was very inspired by our mutual friend, Bob Armstrong. He, he, he took teaching so seriously. And I was so deeply impressed by his setup and his attitude. You know, it, it, he was so professional. And I'd, I'd experienced people giving drum lessons on some beaten up old practice pads in their bedroom. And I thought that's so far, Bob Armstrong is so far removed from that concept. He's so professional. Um, and I think there was an element of, of you know, if I'm going to do it, if I'm going to do the teaching thing, I want to do it like that. So I had this idea of giving the, the teaching studio a brand name, which was Drum Sense, which, I, which Lucy came up with in an instant in the Eel Pie pub in Twickenham. She just came up with that word. Well, just call it Drum Sense. Wow, that's brilliant. Um, and the thing that I started to feel, though, was that um, there are so many drum books have been written for beginners and no one had written a drum book. Hold on, I've got one here. Fancy that. No, well, <laughs> hold it up to the camera, Colin. There we go. The book. And, oh. all of the, and there's another one. Wow. Funny that I should have them both here. <laughs> um, so Sorry, what I was doing, can you go see a truck going in the background on the cell? No. No, fine. Okay. Sorry. Carry on. You to take me away. Um, uh, this is all still part of the answer, uh, Philippe. Um, the, I was very keen to write a drum book that just got the student playing on page one. And this is what I've been teaching at Rock Bottom in West Croydon. I've been teaching, um, uh, as soon as you get a pair of sticks in your hand, first lesson, there's the kit, there's the bass drum, there's the drum. let's start, let's play. So page one of Drum Sense gets the student playing on their very, very, very first lesson. So I need to speed up here because otherwise I'll go down that path and we really will be here all day. Um, so th that, the book worked really well and one day I had too many students and I called a friend of mine uh, called Steve Emney and said, could you help me give some lessons today? And he said, I don't know what to do. And I said, don't worry about that. I'll tell you what to do. There's the book. Just take them through it. Simple as that, you don't need to know anything. <laughs> Whichever page they're on, show them the next page. It couldn't be easier. And he came back, he gave three lessons, and at the end of the day, we went to the pub and he said, that was, that was brilliant, I really enjoyed that. And that was my inspiration. I thought, well, this is the thing to do. Instead of trying to sell the book to loads of students, which you know, is, a, is a small return, really, what I should be doing is selling the book to teachers. And then they can use the book on their students. And therefore, every, for, for one book I sell, I might reach 20 students. And if each of them buys a book, uh, let me see, this is a good idea. <laughs> and and that, was, that was how the drum sense thing came about. Um, that was the origins of it. Now, the, the hard thing, and I, I look back on, the, on this in the early 90s, and I still can't believe I did this. The hard thing was writing the programme which if you asked me to do now, I would just be confounded and intimidated. But back then, I'd, something must have inspired me and uh, I, I rushed through this. I knew exactly what I was writing. That was the thing. I knew exactly what I was going to write. And um, that was what I started to sell. So I, I gave my first seminar at Rock Bottom in West Croydon in 1990-something, and there were like 50 drummers turned up from various parts of the country, which I was quite impressed with. And I sold them the program. I said, if you sign up as a drum set teacher, um, if, especially if you're a drummer who wants to teach and you don't know where to get started, drum sets will help you. There's the program, there's the book. 
I'm telling you it works. You're going to have to believe me, but I'm telling you it works. Uh, and I'm telling you, you that you'll have fun because you'll know where you're going. You'll know where every lesson is leading. Um, and I was very careful to sell this as a program, not as a method and not as a way to beat people over the head. I wasn't saying that you're all rubbish, you should be doing it my way. I wasn't saying that ever. I was saying, if you fancy using an organized program that we know works, here it is. And we'll help you with business cards, we'll help you with flyers. I kept saying, I remember I kept saying to myself, why would I buy this? <clears throat> how, can I, how can I help someone who, who wants to do this? What else can I give them? So I came up with this idea of business cards, flyers, even lesser heads and envelopes. We, we don't use envelopes anymore. Um, a compliment slips, do you know what I mean? All with the drum sense logo on and all with that teacher's details on, so a very personalized thing. So I'm saying that you don't have to worry about that. I'll do that. Um, and so, yeah, that was, that was the idea. The, the basic premise was, instead of teaching the students, why don't I reach out to the teachers and then I can have my program all over the country without opening a school or paying business rates or anything like that. Excellent. Uh, what's the website? Say again? What's the website for DrumSense? DrumSense.com. Cool. Simple as that. And, and it's, it, it's worked best. Um, I, some of the teachers who came to that first seminar are still doing it. Nice. Uh, Simon Millish was one of the original. A guy called Andy Woodard uh, is still doing it. Um, a guy called John Lyle is still doing it. There's, there's quite a few people still doing it. But the best clients were the ones who were a bit like me, who, who wanted to teach. So they're very good drummers, but they wanted to teach, but they didn't really know how to get started. And they're, they're, the, um, they're the best clients. Nice. We can help them with everything there. Cool. So uh, one of the things I wanted to ask you, which should probably segue into your, your kind of demonstration or whatever your concept is, is this idea of, so you're very big on taking groups of notes and then subdividing them. Mm -hmm. um, where, did, where did you first come across that idea? So when did you start doing it? That's a, that's a good question. That's a very good story, actually. So I'm teaching uh, the, with the Drum Sense book. I didn't wake up one morning and decide to write a book. What I was doing in, in West Croydon, in, uh, in Rock Bottom in West Croydon, I was teaching people what I thought would be um, something I could... Well, no, let me put it this way. Every lesson I gave, I'd write out a lesson and I, if I thought, right, that's a lesson I can give again, I'd photocopy it, give it to the student, and I'd keep the original. So to cut a long story short, after some weeks, I had a book's worth. Right. And I thought, well, that's what I'm teaching everybody. That's what I'm teaching every beginner. And that was what I took to a publisher and said, make that into a book. And that was drum sense. Now, the idea for the subdivisions came, I was teaching an old boy. He was clearly an old rock and roller. He was a retired grave digger. Right. <laughs> Seriously, a retired grave digger. And he yeah. had the, the rock and roll quip. He was gray hair, but it was all, he had the duck's ass thing, you know. You do know what I mean, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't mean he literally, he had the rock and roll haircut. Yeah. And he was an old boy like that, you know. Anyway, he was dead keen on learning to play the drums. Um, and he was having a wee bit of a struggle. You know that whole thing about how do you play a fill? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it's da -da -da. What? Anyway, he came to me with a status quo song and said, I've been playing on to this. How does he do that roll around the drums? Do -do 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 sort of thing. It's been triplet to it. And I listened to it and I said, Well, he's playing, I think he's playing three on that drum and three on that drum. And you see where I'm going with this. That was that was what it was. I told him that's how many notes you I, I can hear how many notes he's playing as you go around to get ding. They are here a light bulb moment. I thought, well, that, that's that's what could be easier than that. I'll just take 16 notes, chop them up, put circles where the drums should be, write the numbers on the circles. How idiot proof is that? I can get them to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that that was that, yeah. It was an old grave digger saying, How do I play that? <laughs> That's really good. Cool. It's, it's definitely one of the, the best concepts in the book, I think, because you can just draw yeah, it. Oh, thank you. I think so too. Because it, it, it can be used, you know, if you having these lessons, if you've got a student who's having a good time with these lessons and you keep them for three years, you're still using those subdivisions. 
yeah. again and again and again and again and again. So many ways of using them. And in fact, that was that was um, going back to what Kira was asking. That's one of my inspirations in a way. Is how do we take stuff that we already know and sell it a different way? Mm. So it's not like I mean, we'll come on to rudiments in a minute. Rudiments is a classic example. They're not rudimentary anymore, are they? They you don't need them, but they can't be rudimentary. They're not rudiments because you don't. They're not rudimentary to playing the drum set. They're bloody difficult. <laughs> <laughs> and you could you could you could have a, a, a three hit albums, play three platinum albums, having never used less than twenty five. You know, so trying to sell them, trying to resell them, and repackage them, and resell them is a big deal. And it's a big deal with me, and so that's how I sometimes get inspired. Is only only recently um, I found a new way of of playing. Uh, the what is it a single flange mill okay uh and i thought what well, this is a really boring rudiment so how can i dress it up and i'm determined to have a go at it right so i sat, sat at the pad for a while and and eventually came across this thing and thought well that's much more interesting to, to sell it like that i might have it wrong it's not a flange mill is it it's um yes it is yeah no, it's not. It's um, the drag, the single drag tap. That's it. Okay. The single drag tap, which goes. Oh, I've got a wobbly pad here. Hang on. Um, so it's, it's, it comes by you in eighth notes. So one and two and three and four and. And you play a, a drag on the first note. And then you tap on the other hand. Yeah. So it goes right, left, left, right, right, left. Uh, Colin, you know, do you know how to change the audio on Zoom? Uh, no. No. Okay. Um, no, what's going wrong? It's it's got a it's got a it's got an audio suppressant on there, and it's turning your drums down. So if you can you go to the home page, like on uh, the icon at the bottom. Hang on. We'll cut this out afterwards. I can't I can't see a home page. Uh, if you can you zoom over the the icon on the bottom. Yes, I can see the icons. Yeah, so if you, if you pass over that, you can see one page of video and one page on the left with settings on it. No. Have you not got that? Uh, no. I'm not sure how to do it from the video page. Okay. Are you, are you I've on, got on a laptop or Mac or what are you on? I've got, uh, I'm on a Mac. I've got uh, some icons. Oh, hello. Is that you the top, I think? where it says zoom.us. I think if you click on that and there should be uh, preferences. Oh, oh, I see, hang on. Oh yeah, I've got it. And then you click on audio and then you click on advanced. Uh, I've got audio. There's a little advanced button in the bottom right. Oh yeah, 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 click on that. And then what you want to do is disable the first two options that it gives you. Suppress persistent background noise. Yeah. Got it. It thinks you're typing the key. Sorry. Okay. And now, when you play, we should be able to hear you because it keeps it just cuts out for some reason. Yeah, it thinks you're typing on a keyboard and turns it down. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Good. Okay. All right. So, sorry, so I'll go back to describing the the single drag tap. Yep. So I hope no one's going to tell me I'm doing this wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, it, it's, it's, uh, it comes at you in, in eighth notes. It goes right, two, three, uh, one, and two, and three, and four. And you play a drag and then a tap on the other hand. So you go drag, tap, drag, tap, right, left, left, right, right. right. And I'm thinking, you know, how would I sell that to a student? Um, and what I did was I just kept getting faster and faster and faster until it went, it started to triplet itself. And turned into something else. And I thought, oh, so what I'm almost what I'm doing there is I'm going right, left, left. Imagine playing a group of three and doubling the last note. 
One, two, three, one, two, three. And I thought that's much more interesting. Yeah. I, I can live with that. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, well, if, if I'm going to teach the drag tap, because I got into this thing where, you know, if the student's interested in rudiments, which they should be, then I need to show them as many as I can find. So that's my excuse for teaching the drag tap. So I'm saying look, it might look a little bit boring to start with, but if we apply a little bit of thinking and just push the envelope a bit, we can come up with something else. And then you can say, so look, you can move that drag. This, and this is an old routine. I'm sure you guys know this one. You can move that double any way you like. And all you're doing is playing the drag tap with different inversions. And it gives you an excuse to, to try that, you know. Very cool. Nice. nice. Kira, was that you were going to ask? Say again? Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask. Uh, I've got a, a few. Um, I'm just curious, because um, you mentioned Bob Armstrong. Um, did you have lessons with him? Y yeah, I've got an interesting story to tell about Bob. Um, and again, I'll try and keep it concise. When I was uh, a, a teenager, um, somebody said to me, you should go and watch Bob Armstrong play, because I lived in Essex. And um, my brother, who's a guitar player, actually got the gig, Sunday lunchtime, jazz blow, at uh, a pub in South End. And Bob was on drums. So um, I went to see Bob at that gig and asked him if I could sit in. And he let me sit in and I was dreadful. <laughs> I played really badly. Uh, and afterwards he was not impressed. Um, and I made it my mission to uh, have a second go at Bob Armstrong. So I did some practice and um, went to see him again. And this time we, we sat in as a band, the, his band let us sit in. And we did a great job. And afterwards, Bob came up to me and said, oh, you really come on. And I, fantastic. Uh, and uh, I ended up depping for Bob, bizarrely enough, which I never thought would happen. Uh, but that's another story. So a couple of years go by and uh, I, I bumped into Bob and said, um, look, I'm interested in teaching. And uh, well, actually there's, there is a bit more to this. I did go for a lesson with Bob um, I'd forgotten this bit of the story. I'll, again, I'll try and keep it concise. I, I went to Bob's house with a guy who I knew, who knew Bob. I didn't know Bob. So I went with this guy and we knocked on Bob's door and Bob let us in and took us down to the studio. And I told him I wanted to be a drummer and I was working and he, he sat me at the kit and said, play this. And I kind of bashed through it. And um, that was how I met him. So I booked a lesson with him. And the guy I was with, booked a lesson as well and I turned up for my lesson and the other guy didn't turn up and Bob was furious um, and, but Bob gave me this one lesson and basically told me um, showed me his way of holding a drumstick uh, and no one had ever said that to me before so that was my first proper proper drum lesson and I came away from that thinking oh there's more to this than meets the eye you know and this guy Bob Armstrong he, he's clearly very serious but the thing was, what you have to remember is I knew Bob as a drummer. I didn't know him as a teacher. He was, he was a clearly a very serious teacher, but he was a gigging drummer. He had the Roy Castle gig. He was playing jazz stuff and he was, he was quite a fearsome drummer. And I would go out my way to go and watch him play. There, there, came, there came a situation where Bob said to me, if you are interested in teaching, I will give you six drum lessons for free. One lesson a week. And in those days, this was the early 80s, I didn't have much else to do. I was doing a few gigs, but I had nothing to do during the day. So I'd go to Bob's house in, in Hornchurch. I'd have um, an hour with him and he'd show me these rudiments. I've still got all the notes downstairs. He'd show me this. And then when I could do it, he'd take another one, put another sheet up. And then occasionally he would stop and say, and this is how I teach this. And I'd go away and I'd practice and I'd come back and I'd do it. And this went on for six weeks. And at the end of six weeks, I had all his sheets 
and he did say to me some people take six years to get through this lot <laughs> <laughs> wow. uh, but i had i had the lot and i've still got his notes downstairs i wish i'd brought them up um uh, and then on the on the sixth lesson he said if you want to have any more i'm gonna to have to charge you and fortunately i had a tour <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I'd, I'd love to have more lessons, but I, this is actually the last one I can do anyway. Now, decades go by, um, Bob and I have become firm friends. And I reminded him of that. And he said, yeah, I remember. I remember those lessons. He said, I don't remember not charging you, though. <laughs> <laughs> said, Honestly, mate, you didn't charge me. I had six lessons for free. <laughs> nice. We've got about, we've got about 10 minutes left. Um, Felipe, have you got anything else you'd like to ask? Yeah, I would like to ask you about your playing career. Uh, how it how it ended up being, uh, you know, how it kind of started, in, let's say, the, the, the ended up on a high playing with Susie Quattro. Um, well, I can, my playing career is the same as everyone else's. It was all word of mouth. It was all one gig leads to another. Uh, the best example being the first professional theatre show I ever did. Um, at the end of it, the musical director said, do you want to do the pantomime? And at the end of that, the, one of the musicians said, I know a, a, a show that's going on. I know they don't have a drummer. Do you want? It was all word of mouth. Um, I mean, even, even, the, even the Susie thing was, was because I'd got to know them because they lived in the area. So, and I'd done some sessions for her husband, who's not her husband anymore, but at the time he was. And he was, she was getting pregnant, so she wasn't touring. He was bored. So he was setting sessions up and recording stuff with other people. Um, and he used me for quite a few of those. So I was in the right place at the right time. So when she wanted to go back on the road, her drummer didn't want to do it. And so they said, do you want to do it? And that, that's the whole thing was word of mouth. One, th one gig leads to another, you know. Yep. You know, do a gig and they say, what you, somebody, somebody says, what are you doing next? So, and that's, that's how it works. So, but it was one, one thing that um, I think is interesting talking to young, you know, teenage drummers today who want to be professional musicians. Uh, when it was in, back in my day, when I was in their situation, you had to have everything. You needed to read, you needed to be able to play any show. You need to be able to a march, a funk tune, a rock and roll tune, a jazz tune. Um, if you were doing a pantomime, you might need all those in, in 40 minutes. Uh, you needed a pair of brushes. You probably needed a pair of tint mallets. You need to be able to play anything. And I think that's missing now because those kind of gigs have gone. Yeah. So I used to get a lot of cabaret work and what they call club gigs, where you'd back a comedian and you'd back a singer and you'd back a juggler and you'd be playing all kinds of music in, in the space of one hour. Um, and of course those gigs don't happen. Yeah. Well, that's all gone. Hardly um, any gigs happen as a moment. Yeah, well, well, right now, no gigs happen. No gigs at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, so that, that was my playing career was, was very varied. Cool. Um, I do. Um, I think the best example was probably uh, a, a two-week tour of Japan, culminating in two nights at a club in Tokyo, playing with Susie Quattro, playing Can the Can, Devilgate Drive, flying home, day off, wedding reception in a scout hut in Essex, <laughs> fight in the car park. <laughs> Excellent. Brilliant. Bass player in the break saying, "You've been doing much." <laughs> 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 um, so look, if we're winding up, I wanted to just demonstrate this thing. Please do, yeah. So, how, much, how long have I got, Mark? Well, ten minutes is fine. How many? Ten. Okay. So, um, this idea of reworking stuff we already know. I came up with this. This. Um, and so, if if I take credit for anything, it's for repackaging. I haven't invented anything or or thought of something brand new it's, it's just repackaging so i'm thinking every uh sticking uh accented pattern that you have uh let's say or even 
anything like that. You have your hand-to-hand -hand sticking and you have what I'm calling alternative sticking. Now, alternative sticking is based on a diddle. So if I have groups of three, the uh, single stroke sticking is that. Don't ask me why I'm holding one stick funny. Um, <laughs> that the new name for it, funny. Yeah. <laughs> funny. <laughs> There's nothing easy about it. No, I know. Um, but the alternative sticking would be that. In other words, a diddle, which enables one stick to get up in the air, and you've changed your access to those accents. So instead of going right, left, right, left, I'm now going right, 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 right. And that changes my access to the drum set, because I can go over here without doing that. Uh, so that's a group of three. A group of four is a paradigm. Which again has, has changed my access. Instead of going right, 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 I can now go right, left, right, left. And the diddle, as we all know, is getting the stick up. So if I'm going like that, sorry, I'm already faster than I'm, if I go with single strokes. I'm putting that much effort into it. If I use the alternative sticking, I'm putting no effort into it at all. So there's a paradiddle which I can now repackage. <clears throat> Instead of saying to the student, you need to learn a paradiddle because we all learn how to use a paradiddle. I'm now saying it's a gear shift. Yeah. If you go from that speed to that speed, if I shift gear, I can now go faster. So that's a very powerful thing. You know, it's, you need this because it's going to help you play. You get those accents up to cymbals, <coughs> doing those as single strokes is quite wearing, but with paradiddles, it's actually quite easy. So you've got groups of three, groups of four. A group of five is a paradiddle tap. And a group which is para diddle tap, simple as that. Which is quite a nice way of playing quintuplets, actually. There's a little margin note. Um, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's quite nice round the kick. And, and anyway, stuff. A group of six is a para diddle diddle. So instead of going. Now, admittedly, that one stays on the right hand, but nonetheless, the, the, the concept of the diddle is helping that hand get up. So, if we said, let's take 16 notes and divide them into three, four, five, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, and we've got four at the end. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, So that's quite a nice little uh, rhythmic pattern. Um, introducing rudiments into that, if I roll, I'm much better at it, so I don't want to do that. And some stroke rolls, if you've got five stroke rolls, seven stroke rolls, a nine stroke roll, another seven, they all just come jumping out. So, the, the alternative sticking would be right, left, left, right, left, right, right, paradiddle tap, right, left, right, right, left, so left, right, left, left, right, and a paradiddle, paradiddle. Three, four, five, four. Sorry. You've got the same sound but different sticking and, and different access. Sorry. Now I know I haven't got much time left, so I'll just say 
that that is gives you a, a, a different um, approach to the same pattern. Also, uh, it means that if you split your hands up, something else appears. So now you've got something else going on. If you start moving that around the drums or use pretend it's cascara, <clears throat> suddenly you've gone from a bunch of numbers to something completely different and usable and fun. And it, it just makes sense of this whole paradiddle thing. Um, it just gives the student something to work with. And it's a methodology as well. That's the other thing. It's great. It's like handing someone What's that old saying about teaching someone to fish? Yeah. Instead of yeah. giving them a fish, you teach them to fish. It's like handing them a method. I think that the last bit that you did is my favorite of all your concepts. I think I've heard you call it leaning before. You're kind of emphasizing one side of the melody. It's yeah, it's because you, you are. Uh, if I'm, uh, I'm probably going to mess this up. Yeah, see what I mean? If I lean on that side. <laughs> Fantastic. So, you got two sides to the same thing. That's very so you, good. You have some very real discovery moments. You start cool. leaning on that side and it, it, something else comes out. It's unbelievable. So wh where can people find you online? You got f we know you're on Facebook. Are you on any other platforms? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. You've got YouTube though, surely. Yeah, yeah the YouTube channel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah the YouTube sure. channel. Well, thanks. Thanks so much for doing this today, Colin. It's been a real pleasure, mate. Um, and uh, if you've enjoyed watching this, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the, hit the little bell at the bottom there, right, Felipe? That they can click. Yes, on. that's right. And learn. People, this is the grip. This is the funny grip. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Colin. See you, Why are you having to stick funny? <laughs> See you later. Thanks, Thank Colin. you. See you later. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 <laughs>